All right, hello, welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and I wanted to show you my newest invention. These are LED candles. I'm calling them light clicks. Okay, and I'll show you why here in a second. So uh, it's a all 3D printed switch that uses a paper clip and a 2025 battery. Uh, so one of these little guys right here. Uh, you can actually use 2032s too. Any 20 millimeter. Um, battery will work. So they kind of look like this when they're lit up. This one has an eighth inch adapter for acrylic. So let's say you wanted to print something on acrylic using a laser cutter. You can light up the small little object with one of these. Oh, these are great. So think about it. Um, Halloween time, lighting up pumpkins. Think about Christmas tree ornaments that light up. Um, so where I got the idea here is I go to a comic book shop every week and I have like a $40 a week habit for comics. And I saw this little dude laying around, Colossus, and you know I wasn't into the game, but I, I love the little figure. And I, I rotated the base and sure enough it's got little stats on it. Just like that. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> what would be cool is a switch that does this. So that's where the idea came from. So that's why I'm calling it candle clicks because these are called hero clicks. And then it turns out, you know, there's some hero clicks out there that cast spells and you can have the spell light up. So yeah, these are another use that I never even thought of is uh, a hero click spell. Who know? Who knew? So I'm going to show you how I put this together. All the files are on Thingiverse. Uh, this video is going to show you this step by step. It's not really complex. I can whip them out pretty quick now. Um, and I'll show you what tools that you're going to need for the job. I tried to limit the amount of tools and the amount of stuff. Uh, trust me, there's only a battery, an LED light, some wire, and the hardest thing to find is this copper stripping but they use this for um, stained glass work. So I'll get into a bill of materials here in a second, but other than that, hope you can adopt it into whatever you're making. All right, so here we go. Okay, to get started, you're going to need the three pieces that you can print. Actually, you only need these two to start out with. So this one is the battery holder, and this is the rotating stand. This one is the eighth inch adapter for acrylic. So in case you want to put an acrylic piece on top of it to give it some flair. Uh, you're going to need a 2025 battery is what I suggest getting. a pair of cutters. These came from SparkFun. Uh, I love these. These are actually really good, these bullnose pliers. These are in the scrapbooking section at your local hobby store. And some longer needle nose pliers work really good for bending wire. Okay, so wire. Now you can use a paper clip. I find a paper clip kind of I don't know, I got enough of this wire to actually wrap around Paris twice, so I'm just going to use it. Uh, this is 20 gauge wire, which is about the same thickness of a paper clip. I use 20 gauge wire for one piece, and I use 22 gauge wire for the other piece. Now 22 gauge wire is also the wire that you use for breadboarding, so um, if you had a paper clip and some breadboard wire, you're good to go. Uh, this stuff right here. So this is a copper tape and you peel it off, it's sticky on one side. We're not really using it for the attendant purpose. I'm using it for conductivity and uh, it's going to connect the battery with the switch and uh, this one piece could probably make a, like 10 or 15 of those things. So you don't need much. A whole roll is uh, like three or four bucks and you can get it at your local hobby store or online. It's for stained glass, it's called stained glass tape or copper tape for stained glass. 
Okay, LED, standard 5 mil. And I think that's it for right now. Soldering iron and solder. You're going to need those. Okay, so those are your build materials. Um, you can see not too much stuff. Uh, probably stuff that you have laying around. Let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna cut a piece of wire here. And roughly the length of my hand there, width wise, okay? That's the 20 mil or 20 gauge. And same with this one. Okay, now when you do the 3D print stuff, um, especially on this piece right here, it's going to give you two little pillars right there, see them? Uh, those have to be cut out. That's where the battery goes. That's so it can bridge correctly over the notch. I have some extra filament in there I have to get rid of. So. I love these pliers so much. I can use them for pliers, I can use them for cleaners. Good. This is an electronic drill bit. Uh, it is handy to have. You do not need it, but I like to clean out all the holes. This is a pretty small piece to print, and I'm using a, a 0.5 head on my 3D printer, so it, it's basically a really good prototype printer, but it's not really technically accurate when it comes down to smaller things. So I'm just going to clean out some of these holes. all holes and clean them out. Okay, so that's the prep work you have to do. Uh, there's not much prep work. Now let's go on. Okay, wire assembly. So, I'm going to take the thicker wire, put it like that and bend it. Now I need this bent kind of like this. So you can see it has a hook right there at the end. And you can see this hole on this side so it's going to slip down in here. just like that and then it's gonna go back up and around so what I do is tag that back go up through this hole boy this is really hard to do and watch the video at the same time so I'm watching through a viewport take your time on this just guide it through. If you get your wire too long, it becomes a pain in the butt. But uh, as you can see, that's what I did. So every once in a while, I'll straighten that out and pull it through some more. And once I got it pulled through, it should look like that. Now, flattening that out, you can use these the flathead pliers here. Pull it through. go like that and it'll pull it like if you grip it that way it'll pull it that way and then straighten it up on the bottom just like that okay so you're not out of the water yet now what you do straighten that piece out and you got another hole right here that goes down into So 
So it looks just like that. So it goes up, around, doo -doo, down, then back up, and then over, and then in. Okay, once you get that, you go like this. Bending it just a little bit to make it a little wider right there. And then I'll cut it off flush. Surprising, you didn't hear a cat because it's synonymous with a bit flying that way and hitting a kid or a cat. There we go. Pretty cool, right? So that's wire one. Let's move on to wire two. Okay, wire two. So, stick wire two into this hole, the furthest one over. Go all the way down. Alright, let's go for wire two. Wire two is the thinner 22 gauge. So I'm going to slip that. Here's that last one we put in. This one goes into this hole first. Get it to about right here and make a hook. And it's going to be a small little hook at the end. it. Okay, that hook needs to slide into that crook. So what I do here is I align it, take my pliers and twist. The twisting gives enough torque on it so it goes right into place. Okay. Then try to straighten out your wire. And it goes up through this hole. And you can use the torque method here. Twist it. Okay, then what I do is I just slightly bend it to the side and cut it off. So it has a little hook right there, see it? So that hook keeps everything in place. So there's no glue, there's no, there's no solder just yet, but um, those are the two wires that you need to put in. Now, let's go on to, yeah, as I said, there is a solder part, it's very small, but I'll do that here in the next little section. Okay, so you're going to need a piece of tape that is about that size right there. So, it's about maybe 15 millimeters of tape. And you can cut this off if you screw up, so don't worry about it. You need to do that. Okay, notice I have a little bit of clip on this side and a little bit of clip on this side. That's important so the solder can stick to the, the copper tape. Now the copper tape is sticky on the one side, so we can't get it too hot. But the stiffness of the um, solder is going to keep it sort of in place anyway. like that. Pretty nice, right? 
Now this might be a little long, but um, again, if you need to trim it back at this point, you can use an exacto knife. I don't have a really good exacto knife. This one's really broken, but that might be good. There we go, trimmed it back, just a skosh. Make sure it's laying really flat. Another thing you can do is put some super glue underneath it if you want, but really when it cools down, it will stick quite nicely. Okay, so next step. Okay, so this is the cap. And you can see there's a bunch of holes in this thing. So there's two holes that are kind of evenly spaced. These two right here. So take all your holes and put them on this side and just those are the holes that you use for the LED. Okay, let me get a yellow LED. Alright, so this is your ground and this is your positive on the side. So your ground, it would be your shortest leg of your LED, goes like this. like that. Put it down in there. Try to get it as far as down as possible. And then you're going to put this leg through the second hole. When you turn it over. That first hole was an intended hole to use, but it doesn't work that good. So don't use that one. Should I take it out of the design? No, because I'll show you what I use it for. Again, putting some pressure on this. Now, if I can do it on video. So I'm going to loop it back around and then into that hole and then just like that. And then I'll loop it back around. So there we go. Very secure. Okay, this one's a pain. So, ready? Okay, it's got to go up to this hole. Then it's got to go down into the next smaller hole. Just like that. And then it's got to go back up again. And I like using this twisting method to get everything as tight as possible. And I like to keep this one flush this way. So I'll cut it. And then kind of squeeze it that way. By now this is really taut. And there, you could put a little bit of super glue right there. It doesn't need to be. So this little cap actually covers over that huge hot mess. Except for that little bracket right over on the other, this side. Okay, so this gets super glued down. Uh, be careful if you're using a brightly colored plastic because the super glue picks up all kinds of nasty little bits and plastic and dirt and then it gets embedded in your piece. So that is the cat.
let's go on. Alright, so I have the acrylic thing glued on there now. Here's this. Battery. Ah, child protection. There we go. So this goes positive side up, right into there. As I said, the 2025 battery is by far the better one because it's a little thinner, so it fits in down in there really good. You don't have to be too accurate with this. Uh, about right there works. If you want to test it out, you can. I just grab a spare LED. And touch this and this. There we go. Works out. Okay, so now you're going to take this cap, and uh, it doesn't matter how you put this on, but if you want to get it to light up right away, you'll take these two holes and put them over the top of this wire right here. Just like that. And it takes a couple minutes to get it to, um, I don't know, spin correctly, you know what I mean? Like you gotta work it in a little bit, but there it is. Perfect. It actually turned out really nice. And what I, how I've been attaching the acrylic pieces is I just put a dab of super glue in there. Now be careful what kind of super glue you work with with acrylic because um, some can stain it. The staining actually helps it a little bit because it transmits the light into it a little bit more um, at the base, but that's just personal preference. Uh, me, if you want a non-staining acrylic glue, I love this stuff right here, Instacure Gap Filling Super Glue. This stuff is amazing. Product of choice. Anywhere you find this, buy three of them. It is really amazing. Uh, so it's it doesn't stain the acrylic that bad. It still does, but not as bad. They do make acrylic super glue too, uh, just not in my area. So and this last piece, I, I want to cut this off. This one, you can cut a little bit flush. Just be careful because if it's sharp. You know, if you, if you are using these for those hero click thingies, they use paper maps. So you might want to file that down or put something over it, be, for whatever, over the top of that. There we go. So, I hope you enjoy the new toy. Not for intended purposes, hopefully. And, again, my name is Jason Welsh. Have fun and free on Thingiverse. Go get it.